Hey everyone, DMV Solar Rider back with another video. I intended to do a little run from Triangle down to Ikea Harbor, but the road is closed for not the first time. I'm not sure what's going on down there, but can't ride here. And I didn't really, you know, riding, showing you guys a ride today was not my top priority. So I don't know where we're going to go. We'll head back towards DC. But anyways, uh, the point of today's video was not really to show you a new ride. I wanted to chat with you guys following my Florida road trip and kind of uh, share that experience, particularly the ride back. I mean, long story short is, you know, I've kind of made light of people who don't like to ride in the winter, you know, talked about how I can't imagine uh, not riding or storing my bike. And that's true. Like, uh, I, I just, I couldn't imagine going all winter without riding. But my little Florida road trip has given me uh, maybe a little more sensitivity towards those who maybe their climates are a little colder than the mid-atlantic and they don't really want to ride in 30 degree weather you see my florida road trip was awesome but the first day and the last day were pretty damn miserable um you know when i left the dmv to head down there it was like 35 degrees in the morning. So it was pretty cold the whole way through North Carolina, which is most of the first day. I think I rode from the DC area to the outskirts of Savannah my first day. And it didn't really get to, I think maybe 50 degrees as I was crossing into South Carolina, which was, you know, a great, huge difference. But that wasn't until the end of the day and even then it started raining, so I kind of called it a day after about 550 miles, 525 miles. Didn't stop because I was tired. You know, I was stopping, every, you know, 10 minutes every hour just to make sure I didn't get butt burned, that sort of stuff. And that, that strategy worked great. Um, but I was so cold. And, you know, I kind of have reviewed in the past, you know, my layering for cold weather riding and it's always been good enough and i figured yeah it'd be cold the first day it'd be cold as i'm getting back into the dmv but you know it's been good enough for all my local rides so it'll be good enough for this road trip and i think what happens is you know if i go for a ride in the high 30s or 40s by the way it's an amazing day today it's in mid 50s beautifully sunny I got my summer gloves on, my heated grips are just at medium, it's awesome. Um, anyways, I think when I'm riding locally around the DMV and it's freezing, I can always go home. It's not a big deal. I've never actually cut a ride short to go home because I'm too cold. I think knowing that I can is enough. But when I headed out to ride down to Florida, I mean, I had a schedule to keep. I had hotel reservations, you know, I got the special deal, non-refundable reservations, so I saved a little bit of money. I was paying whether I got there or not, and I did not want to waste money like that. So I had to be down in Florida in two days, you know, my hotel in Orlando. And I think knowing that I had no choice but to keep going, and I had to get at least, you know, 500 miles done the first day, it kind of just made me obsess over the cold, you know. It's like all I could think about was how miserable my toes were, how miserable my fingers were, you know, the backs of my hands, not the palms, because, you know, I've got the heated grips. That's what I can think. And, and the same thing on the way back. You know, the first day from the Keys up through into Georgia it was fine. Uh, I ended up having to stop in Darien, Georgia because it started raining, got into the low 50s, I was freezing my ass off, and I was soaked. I mean, it was real rain, it was not like a, a few drops of rain. Fortunately, I was able to stop, 
was able to do some laundry, you know, wash and dry my riding gear. And then the next day, it was freaking cold. It was like 38 degrees when I left the, the hotel at like 7 a.m. I think it only got up into the, the low 40s at any point along the way. And then as I got closer to Richmond, it got a little warmer, like maybe 46, 47. But there was rain in the forecast. And, you know, I put my winter suit on because I didn't want to get caught like I did heading into Georgia. And I didn't really get much rain south of Richmond, even though it was in the forecast. But I noticed the rain suit actually provided some nice protection against the cold wind. But anyways, you know, I was so much more comfortable. And I started getting a little lazy. I was taking lots of breaks, you know. I was probably about uh, 150 miles from home at this point. It's like 4 o'clock. I wasn't, wasn't sweating it. And by the way, my last day was a 625 mile ride from Darien, Georgia to, the, to my home in Northern Virginia. And you know, I, I was doing fine on time. I felt good physically. I was not getting the rain that I had anticipated. Had my rain suit on just to be safe. I've got a one piece built rain suit. We'll talk about that later. I don't recommend a one piece. And that was great and as soon as i got past richmond we hit a lot of rain and not just drizzle it was like full rain and as i'm coming out of richmond on i-95 north i'm riding you can see the rain clearly coming right at you and you know blowing off your visor as it does and then all of a sudden i felt a couple really huge gusts of wind like the kind that startle you and make you wonder you know, what the heck am i doing on a motorcycle in this wind just two big gusts and then all of a sudden I'm looking at the rain and it's looking like snot it's looking like the biggest rain drops you've ever seen and then the next thing you know it's like someone threw a milkshake in my visor I couldn't see a thing I'm wiping it off and it's snow it started to snow I'm flying down I-95 north at you know at least 80 miles an hour if not more and it's snowing on me and I'm I'm freaking out you know I, I don't want to ride a motorcycle in snow in traffic like this so I managed to get off probably within about half a mile just good timing it's a, an exit in Ruther's Glen pulled into a gas station and it continued to snow for an hour as you can see and actually the picture of the snow on the bike that's after I already brushed it off once the whole dash was white it was a thick heavy snow wet snow great for snowballs you know that kind and so I you know for an hour I sat there freaking out like what the heck am I gonna do there was a, a, a motel you know a couple miles away down the street if I decided to spend the night I called a guy who delivered my first motorcycle my Indian Scout to me to see if he might come and pick me up and my bike and just get me home I'm like at this point I'm 66 miles from home the last thing I want to do is have to spend the night 66 miles away because of some snow but you know I'm I'm nervous I don't want to get on the road and have it be icy so the snow stops after an hour the blacktop in the gas station is you know it's slushy and I figure I gotta I can't leave the motorcycle there the gas station attendant told me you leave it here overnight it's gonna be gone in the morning so I figured I had to get it on the road and get it to this motel at least so I got the bike underway it was totally stable the roads you know they were they had some slush on them kind of on the side street leading away from from 95 they were wet but they were stable so I decided as I'm approaching the entrance to 95 let me see how it goes and you know I got on 95 going like 25 miles an hour I have my blinkers on staying in the right lane everyone was very cool they gave me a wide berth I'm sure all of them were like what is this idiot doing riding a motorcycle in snow now it, it wasn't snowing but you could see snow all over the like like the side of the road and I had actually let me take a step back I had talked to someone who just came in to get gas he was coming he was heading south and he said it's only like two exits uh, long, this little snowstorm. And I checked the weather. It was like this weird 
east to west snowstorm covering, you know, two exits on 95. I just happened to be about five minutes late. Had I, had I gotten there five minutes earlier, I would have missed the snow entirely. But because I was, you know, oh, I'm almost home, taking my time, I got my little rain suit on, felt special, I did it to myself. Anyways, so I made it home. The snow did not derail me, but it freaked me out for sure. But it was also, you know, frigid, just frigid. And, you know, I mentioned on one of the videos in Florida, I have big blisters on my hands because I was, you know, squeezing the grip so tight. Um, on that first day, it's just, it's just, it was unpleasant, really unpleasant. So the whole moral of the story is, I have far more sympathy for people who, who store their bikes in winter at least you know people in like upstate new york where it gets a lot colder than it gets here other places the mid-atlantic we have plenty of beautiful days in the winter where you can ride without a problem um but you know while i'll never store my motorcycle in winter i'll try to be more understanding of those of you who do Anyway, so now I've decided I need heated gear because, you know, I don't want to not be able to take road trips in the winter, but I don't want to go through that, that level of, of discomfort again. I mean, in all my motorcycling, and I put on, what, like 30,000 miles in a year and a half, maybe more. Whenever I've been uncomfortable physically on a motorcycle, being on the motorcycle was enough to make me not give a damn. Until this trip. That first day and the last day were so unpleasant. They were so cold. That, you know, the fact that I was on my Challenger wasn't enough. I just, all I could think about was how freaking uncomfortable I was. So I want to look into getting heated gear if any of you guys have like the full kit and caboodle like i'm thinking the socks the pants a liner like this jacket's good i don't i don't need a full winter jacket i just need a liner and gloves and you know i'm looking at first gear looking at hot wired i know gerbing's out there i really kind of like the first gear and hot wired where you just press the button on each piece of clothing then you can change the temperature uh but i'm curious if you guys uh have heated gear and you have any thoughts please share them in the comments below uh, i was looking at some prices of what was available it's pretty pricey it's you know gonna cost me about 700 bucks to outfit myself with the stuff that i want but i'm not gonna spend that much on it i'll wait i'll wait till the end of the season and <laughs> buy it on sale <laughs> i mean it's already january i don't think i'll be doing another long road trip before the end of the winter so I'm not real worried about it. You know, this is more of a an ongoing long-term thing. The other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is, as you know, one of the reasons I got the Challenger is I wanted uh, uh, Indian's new car. Um, I wanted Indian's new ride command because I wanted CarPlay, and I've got it. You see it right here. Got CarPlay on my screen save my bacon a bunch when it comes to police and uh it works great the problem i'm having is you know the usb cord to plug your phone in is there in that glove box and i have had to replace the camera in my phone two times now because the vibration in the motorcycle uh, is breaking the the optical stabilization component in the camera and so on both of my road trips you know the first time this happened was when I was on my way to North Carolina went to take a picture and the camera wouldn't focus and so that whole trip I had to basically use the GoPro for pictures you could get the camera to focus eventually if you tried it to change enough settings in the camera eventually you would get back to your regular photo and it would be, it would focus enough to take a picture. Came back, Apple replaced the camera for a cool 80 bucks. And then, uh, you know, 
over the next three weeks, everything was fine. I thought, you know, it's just this, you know, one-time thing, a random thing. Because I never had this problem on the Chieftain, never had this problem putting my camera on the handlebars on the Scout. So I figured it was a one-time deal. But of course, after three weeks, this, the, the replacement camera broke. Same thing. Took it back to Apple, got replaced again. They said, if, if it breaks a third time, we're just going to replace the entire phone. Because this shouldn't be happening. Now, of course, we did not have an in-depth discussion about, I think my, my motorcycle's vibration is breaking it. And I've done some research since. It's a pretty common occurrence. Um, haven't read too much about phones breaking on baggers it's more people putting them on their handlebars a lot of different types of motorcycles uh, it's not uncommon and I guess you know it kind of annoys me not for Indian Indian made a fantastic motorcycle but if Apple is going to work with these companies to put CarPlay on a motorcycle they should make sure their phone could handle being on a motorcycle this doesn't have wireless CarPlay you have to plug it into a USB and the only way to do that is to put your phone in the glove box. I'd like to think Apple's engineers said, okay, well, let's take a Challenger or a Chieftain for a ride for a good long while and make sure that the phone can handle whatever's going on in the glove box. My guess is they didn't do that. So, anyways, three cameras have broken now. Uh, I, when I was in Florida, the first day I went to take a picture, camera's broken again. So I had to use the GoPros, had to, you know, spend a lot of time trying to get pictures with the phones. Really unfortunate because there were a lot of great pictures to take there. I did my best. And now I got to take the phone in. And even if they give me a new phone, you know, the issue is less about, I, you know, I don't really care about the phone. I want the camera to work reliably. I don't want to buy a camera that's kind of stupid. I've already got it in my phone. I just wanted to not break so I did my research and ended up buying a, a little gizmo called uh, car link it I think I car link it or car link it it's basically you can use it to get wireless carplay right now I'm using carplay on my challenger and my phone is in my pocket I have in this glove box a wireless dongle plugged in that's tricking the challenger into thinking my phone is plugged in in the glove box and that is my temporary solution or it might be my permanent solution so far it seems to be working well now there's maybe a, a second delay if I put the music on mute uh, the GPS seems to be working really well uh, here let's take a, a time out I'll show you the dongle it's right here in the glove box that's it this is the whole thing Okay, so that's it, and it's working well. I uh, The first time I plugged it in, everything seemed to work fine. This morning, when I got on the bike to go out, uh, it seemed like it was working okay, but you know, I was parked in a garage, in a big parking garage, and the GPS froze. Had to stop the bike, unplug it, plug it back in, resync everything. It, it connects to your phone through Wi-Fi, but when you're first turning it on, you have to use Bluetooth. Basically, it pretty much works right out of the box. It's not very complicated. Um, but after the GPS started working, then I couldn't get the volume on the phone, the music to work. Now everything's working fine. It might be a little fussy, but if it gives me what I need uh, without breaking my camera, uh, you know, small price to pay. And as for, you know, charging my phone, because, you know, when you plug your phone into the USB charger, USB dongle that you use for CarPlay, it charges your phone. And obviously I won't be able to do that. And, you know, I have a big power brick I can use by Anchor that I use for, you know, GoPro batteries. If I'm filming all day long, I'll, you know, I, I have a lot of batteries, but, you know, once I go through like five or six of them, I'll start charging them just in case. And I can use that to charge my phone, just put it in my pocket right with my phone. And charge it if I need if I need to it's not ideal but it's it's even less ideal to have a camera on your phone that's broken to be honest kind of frustrating but you know 
I would rather spend, have spent $100 on this dongle, which is what it cost me, than to buy a second phone and have a second phone line so it can get a GPS signal, whatever. I didn't want to have to bother with that. I just want one phone with a camera that works. I don't want to get a backup phone just to use with CarPlay. Although it's always an option, but it's not ideal. So I wanted to uh, show you that dongle and give you that update. Uh, you know, that, that's it. I don't really have much of a ride today. Sorry, guys. Uh, I just got home Saturday. That is the first time in five days I've ridden. Feels great to be on the bike in this lovely weather. This morning when I got up, I, you know, I was like, if I'm going to ride in the next two weeks, today's the day because it's supposed to get really cold with snow coming in the next several days. My guess is I won't ride for another week. Also, uh, I think I've been filming in 24 frames per second. I haven't really seen a, a big improvement in the results when it comes to YouTube's compression. So put the cameras back at 60 frames per second. At least when you get away from trees, it's, it's much prettier. The dash looks nicer in 60 frames than 24 frames. At least I think so. But anyways, that's all I got for you today, guys. No new rides. I just wanted to share my experience riding in awful cold weather over super long distances. Talk to you about my CarPlay and my iPhone issues. Hope you guys are riding safe and having a great time wherever you are. If you enjoyed it, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. I put my ride and ride related content out every Friday. Hit that subscribe button. Click that notification bell. You'll get an alert when my new video is out. And in the meantime, you all stay safe out there. And I'll see you on the next video.